thank you for the privilege of being in your house tonight. What a joy it is in this season to give thanks to you, to praise your holy name for all that you have done for us. Oh, Father, we're so unworthy, but you love us anyway. In your son's name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. Welcome to Carolina Baptist Church, the combination service. Uh, what a, you know something? I don't, y'all weren't here this morning because y'all was at y'all's church, and I appreciate that. But what we didn't have this morning was that organ. And I can tell you right now, my friends, our organist was in the bed sick, and she couldn't be here, but I text her all day. <laughs> Are you coming? How art thou? I even, I've even texted her in King James. How art thou? You know? <laughs> I wanted to know we missed her greatly, and by God's grace and mercy, here she is, and and we feel blessed and honored and privileged to have her. Day. There's just something about having a piano and an organ. You know, these two have been playing together, what, 15, 16, 17 years now? It's been a long, it's long. I've been here 20, so, you know. And it's how they know where each other is. That's just a God thing. You know what I'm talking about? It's just amazing. So anyway, we're glad you're here tonight. We're all about praise tonight. We're not about formality tonight. We're not about praising God, worshiping God in spirit. We even got a choir here for you. Ain't they pretty? It's awesome. And they're, they're going to do a, a real real uh, upbeat song just before Brother Phil preaches for us. In the meantime, if you want to take out a hymn book to go to hymn 637 or see the words on the screen and sing along, either way, let's stand up and say, Come all ye faithful people, come. approach God, we ought to approach him like he's great, which he is great. Amen. He is great. And uh, I want y'all to I want y'all to stand. We're going to praise God a little bit. Amen. We don't have the words on the board for you, but uh, everybody's familiar with this particular song. But listen to the words. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. In the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness, beautiful for situation, 
the joy of the holy is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. One more time. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the holy is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. Amen. Amen. Look, um, aren't you glad it's Thanksgiving time? I, I don't know. I, the day's been so, such a day of praise and worship. Uh, Sunday school this morning was so fantastic. I'll tell you what, I hope at your churches you had a good Sunday school like that this morning too. But I, I was, was just dynamite. We had a, had a wonderful time in the Lord. Uh, we weren't raptured, but it was pretty close. Pretty close. You know, we're looking for the rapture, right? We got things to be thankful for, right? And the scripture says when we approach God, we need to come before him with thanksgiving in our heart. Sing the words along with me. I will enter his gates. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad, I will rejoice for he has made me glad, he has made me glad, oh he has made me glad, I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad, I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, oh he has made me glad, I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Amen. Y'all sound like you're glad tonight. I'm glad you are glad tonight. Amen. We got something to be glad about. Y'all know that tonight? Something to be glad about. Pastor. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my brother. It's prayer time. What do we do at prayer time? First and foremost, we get our hearts and minds right with God. You see, because we are by our nature at arm's length with God. And the only way to get close to him is confess. And that's what you do in prayer. You go to the Lord and say, Lord, I have messed up. And if you're like me, you got a whole litany of things you need to lay on out there. Be plain. He knows. Can't hide from him. You know, the good news is he'll forgive you. That's his promise. And when he does forgive you, suddenly everything we're involved with tonight, the praise, the worship, the singing, the message, suddenly gets past our ears down into our heart and can make a difference. So let's bow our heads and pray. Pray first for your own personal forgiveness with God. Then pray for your spouse, for your family, for your children, your grandchildren. Pray for your church. Give praise to God in your prayer for the goodness of the fact that you're breathing and still can do the things he calls you to do. Praise God that our organist is well and back yes. with us tonight. Going to get amen? amen? 
Praise God that you are here tonight to worship with other believers, your brothers and sisters in Christ that we'll spend eternity with. Almighty, holy God, I just come to you, your poor humble servant, thanking you for loving me in spite of how I am and even worse, how I was. But Lord, to come to you tonight, we just lay it bare before you, thanking you for all that you do, for the very breath that you give us, for the resources you give us, for the fellowship you give us, for the privilege of being in your house, the privilege of singing songs to you, Lord. Father, may all we do tonight bless your holy name. And it's in that holy name that we pray. Amen. Amen. I want everybody to stand. You may have never heard the words of this song. I don't want to tell you tonight, the name of Jesus is beautiful. I don't know another beautiful name that I can mention that's as lovely as he is and awesome as he is. Listen to the words and sing along. You were the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation Now revealed in you our Christ What a beautiful name it is What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus Christ my King What a beautiful name it is Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Death could not hold you, the veil tore before you. You silence the boast of sin and the grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. You have no rival, you have no equal, now and forever. kingdom yours is the glory you let the name above all names what a powerful name it is what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus Christ my king what a powerful name it is Nothing can fend with against what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Can we do that second? Can we do that second chorus again? Right here. Yeah, let's do that. We're gonna do that second chorus again. What a wonderful name it is. Let's just praise God amen, right here. Amen. What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. 
the name of Jesus Christ, my King. Do you believe that this evening? What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, this evening, uh, we're going to take up our offering, but the offering tonight will not be uh, for church. It'll be for missions. You know, this is Thanksgiving, folks. It's time of year uh, for Thanksgiving. It's a time that, uh, you know, people uh, need food. They need things like that. The missionaries need things. And if you're uh, interested and God's put it on your heart to to make a mission offering, we have a have a box here on the front, and we have one also uh, in the vestibule of the church. If you'd like uh, to make an offering for that, but I have a musician to uh, play, I guess. And uh, oh, out the church. Okay, all right, all right. Well, praise God. Amen. But uh, keep keep that in mind. Amen. 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 You know, uh, God is so good. You may be seated. Amen. You know, how many of you are born again? Amen. Everybody should have raised a hand, Amy. Everybody dug twice for you, brother. Amen. 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 This song was written by Third Day, and it's one of my favorite songs. And uh, you may have heard it. And if you want to sing along, that's fine too. Today I found myself. After searching all these years And the man that I saw He wasn't at all who I thought he'd be I was lost when you found me here And I was broken beyond repair then you came along and you sang your song over me. It feels like I'm born again. It feels like I'm living for the very first time. First time in my life. Make a promise to me now. Reassure my heart somehow that the love that I feel is so much more real than anything I have a feeling in my soul and I pray that I'm not wrong that the life I have now it is only the beginning It feels like I'm born again It feels like I'm living For the very first time For the very first time It feels like I'm breathing first time for the very first time 
I wasn't looking for something that was more than what I had yesterday. Then you came to me and you gave to me life and a love that I've never known, that I've never felt before. Feels like I'm born again. It feels like I'm living for the very first time. For the very first time in my to read the text to you that the word will be coming from tonight. I'm going to be bringing it from 1 Thessalonians, the 5th chapter, the 18th verse. And I would like to ask if you're able to please stand with me for the reading of God's word. The word of God reads, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. <laughs> now what did our brother just tell us he was like what was he singing about born again would you run one of them off <laughs> you know I, I, I got the feet of my brother that if we're going to be born again there's a level, level of excitement in that, isn't it? Amen. Amen. You may not remember the exact line. You got born again. But I can tell you what, in my world, that's shouting time. <laughs>
Praise God. Shouting time. I've already read you the text from the message I want to bring you this evening. I'm thankful to be here tonight to share it with you. I'm thankful to be among good Christian brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. I'm thankful to hear a choir. You have no idea how much of a blessing that is when we don't, not only do we not have a choir, we don't have a musician. And we got, we play songs to sing too. <laughs> and our praise team does a great job. They do. But uh, it, it's just something, I mean, you got a pastor here that's musically trained. I'm not even close to that. I have no idea. I don't know anything about music other than I like the song or I don't like the song. That's about where I'm at. Uh, it, it's a blessing that churches can come together in the spirit of thanksgiving and bringing thanks to God. Um, I know Pastor uh, Doug, or Doug will know this, and uh, you have Pastor Tim with you now. He can tell you this. Uh, it ain't easy for pastors to ask other pastors to do things together. They get all defensive, and they want to start like, what are you after? What are you trying to do? And there's some maybe a level of distrust at times. It's a very, uh, it can be distressful at times when you're trying to create a unity amongst the body of Christ, and it's like no one wants to play along sometimes. It can be very frustrating. I'm very thankful also, uh, for those of you who are not aware, that every Friday, most of the time, it's in this fellowship hall here. Every Friday, we have a men's breakfast. Uh, starts at 6.30. It goes about an hour. And that's not by design, so if you've got to get to work right after that, you can get your breakfast. You, get, you can go. Look, uh, I attend that as often as I'm able, very frequently. I love it. I'm thankful for it. It feeds into my life as a brother in Christ. And, and if you don't attend that, I want to invite you to that. That is a good thing that we have. It, you got people from multiple churches, men coming together. We, we love on each other. We, you know, when, when men are around and the women don't supervise us, we harass one another. <laughs> right? So you can let your inner man out and do what you want to do. But it, and we bond. We get, we get the food, which is the, the first draw. But we also get the manna from heaven, the word of God. Amen. And then we pray together. If you've not made that, and you're at Friday, 6.30. This, this coming Friday, we're not having it because of the holidays. But after that, it's like, I, I, I ain't going to miss it. And I, I encourage you to make that if you can. And I'm thankful here to be tonight, not just to, just to bring the word and, and to be invited by a fellow minister. It's not just a fellow minister. I consider Pastor Doug a friend. I'm thankful I can even do this. Why would God want me to do this? I would have never picked me to preach to anybody. Sorry, that's not on my sheet. <laughs> but there's a lot to be thankful for in the Lord. There's a lot to be thankful for. And of course, there's a Thanksgiving service. And we give thanks to God for all things. Because all good things that you're like, I'm so thankful I got that. You know where that comes from? It comes from God above. Your Father who provided it. And if He decided you ain't going to have it, then you ain't going to have it. And you can might think to yourself, I don't need that, but he might give it to you because you need it. And in that, you should be thankful. Around this time of year, you might see this, but there are times where, you, you, even not during this time of year, Thanksgiving, you might see this with various movies and sitcoms and shows and whatnot that you watch that oftentimes they have a, a common scene. We have people sitting around a dinner table And they're doing that whole forced, what do you have something to be thankful? You have to go around the table, and everyone has to say something 
that they're thankful for. And what's the general mood that you have at that table? No one wants to do it. No one wants, everybody's being, but there's usually the parents or the grandparents are making the whole family do it. Go around the horn and you usually have this one person that just absolutely is rebellious against the idea of giving thanks to something and that whole tradition and tries to ruin the whole affair. And, it's, and of course, when you watch, it's meant to be humorous. It's, it's meant to give you a chuckle, to make you laugh, and, and maybe even to get you think how silly it is to go around a table and ask what people are thankful for. Why would you do that? That's just crazy. That's just, a, I don't know, that's just something those weird people do. You don't need to do it. All the smart people, they're not doing it. There's almost like this obsession with not giving thanks. Emphasize, with, with this concept that uh, why should I have to give thanks that is something I should just have anyway. I'm entitled to it. It's mine. Because I exist and I like me, I should have whatever I want. Why should I have to say thank you for anything when it should just be mine by right? There's this entitlement. There's even, by extension, this idea that even what I have is not even worth having in a way because of how it's procured from some oppressive system or these people did this or the man did that or whatever and we have all this stuff but it's gotten by some illegal means or whatever it is. So some complaint, I, I, I refuse to say I'm thankful, but here's something I do notice, they don't give it back. They don't return it. They, they, I can't believe we have this and this happened and these people are suffering and, and there's all this complaint and how can we be thankful for all this stuff when this is going on and that was going on but notice if they ever give that stuff back. Nope. Notice if they ever give that stuff up. Nope. Notice if they ever step in to try to alleviate the situation. No, that's too hard. You just complain and blame somebody else. But the one thing apparently you're not going to hear from some people's lips is thank you. Even more so, it is rare to hear, thank you, God, whom I know provided it in the first place, and without his will, I wouldn't even have it. This obsession with not giving thanks. And yet with all of the theatrics of why I don't have to say I'm thankful for something, sort of like this attempt at a false morality from people who really don't have a morality of their own. If you're not a thankful person, you have no real morality. Much less a morality that comes from God. So you create this own little morality of how I can judge another, but I'll still keep my stuff. I can judge somebody else and give a sense of moral superiority, but not be thankful for anything that I they steal from others just as much as the people they complain about. They do underhanded things just as much as the people they complain about. As they have condemned others, they are condemning themselves before God and they have no idea. Because Jesus makes it really simple in this manner. For those who even don't want to accept the morality that comes from God, he says you'll still be judged by your own yardstick. Your standards, we'll use those. And you'll still fail to uphold your own standards. And that's where we're at setting with a lot of people today who create their own morality in order to judge somebody else, and yet they themselves cannot maintain their own self-made morality. Such is the depravity of men in our sinful nature and why we need God in the first place. But for the Christian, dear friend, and I, I imagine most of you are Christian, but I always assume there's one tucked in that really isn't. And you might be here tonight because you were forced to be here. Or you're here because, hey, it's a special thing. It's Thanksgiving. You should come be with the family. And you're like the guy at the table. You have something to be thanked for, and you're a little bit reluctant to play along. But you're here. It's cool. 
I'm still talking to you because everything that is good comes from God. The Christian has no option in this matter whether you are thankful or not. This is not a one-day event. I am <laughs> still baffled by the irony that I live in a nation that is obsessive about observing a holiday called Thanksgiving, which is celebrated by excessive, excessive feasting, which I'm okay with on that day. Right? But we're not really being thankful about anything. It's called Thanksgiving. We're just thankful for, hey, we're going to have a lot of cool food and get the day off, hopefully, unless you work for Walmart or something, right? We're thankful for an indulgence, really. But we call it Thanksgiving. We're supposed to be doing a day of Thanksgiving, and then the very next day is what? Black Friday, where you immediately forgot to be thankful for what you have, and you go out into armed combat with another shopper to beat him to the deal, trample people to death because they... They have a TV that's one inch bigger than the one you have now. And it's smarter than the one you have now. And people may die to get this device when the day before was a day of Thanksgiving. Do you not see the irony there? I see it. And it's plain as day to me. It's plain as day to God that can a nation really mock God? When we arbitrarily say, hey, today's the day of Thanksgiving, and we really don't give thanks to God for anything, and then the very next day be so worldly and consumed with the things of the world, it's as if God does not exist. It is a mockery. But Thanksgiving is meant to be a continual practice. Every day, all day. So it's not like you just save up and then when Thanksgiving comes along, you get everybody in a circle and they just start expressing their thanks. This is a state of being for the Christian. If you are born again, if you are walking in the steps that God has ordained for you to walk, if you are filled with the Holy Spirit of God, if you are covered in the blood of the Lamb, you will be thankful to God for everything. This is a continuous practice, something done all the time. How do I know this? Why do I know this? Because I look at a simple verse in the Scripture of God. And the very first two words of this verse is what? In everything. In everything. So... I'm not an English major, so if you are, maybe you can correct me, or try to. But when it says, in everything, do you presume there's an exclusion clause tucked in there into that phrase? In everything except. In everything unless you don't feel like it. In everything unless things ain't going the way I wanted them to. In everything but I don't like that person. You, I don't see a connecting phrase. In fact, there is a What's the phrase? Is that prepositional? I don't know. I have no idea. Conju Conjunction? I don't know. There's something in English where a phrase <laughs> enhances another phrase and it expounds a greater understanding, definition, something. All I know is there ain't nothing there with an except. There's nowhere in there where there's an excuse of, I don't have to do that in this case because it's this feller or this happened, or that's going on. It says simply this, in all the simplicity of the word of God, in everything. Now this is where, maybe, we will exercise our naturalistic lawyer instinct. And you look for that loophole. Well, where's the except? Where's the, where's the place where that doesn't have to happen? There ain't there, it ain't there. It's very simple. It's very simple. It's right there. 
You've heard the expression, I think, maybe. The reason that man can't listen to 10,000 words or 10,000 laws written on papers because they can't follow 10 written in stone. Those words are sent, do not murder. I mean, I mean, you don't have, there's no exception, no crime. I mean, it just says it. Do not steal. Well, what about this? What about this? What about this? Just don't steal. Do not commit adultery. What about this? What about this? What about this? Just don't do it. Simple. Simple words. God just said, I'm baffled. Even amongst the people of God, sometimes there's this mentality of, I just don't know what God wants. I just can't figure him out. To, you know, I, I really, what's his will for my life? And yet there's just these simple things he says. Hey, don't kill. <laughs> don't murder. Don't steal. Don't commit adultery. Quit coveting everybody else's stuff on Black Friday. In everything, give thanks. That's it. Simple. Well, there it is. I mean, I could have read just that part of the verse. In everything, give thanks. Call it a day. In fact, title of my sermon, In Everything, Give Thanks. I cheated. It, it's so simple. It's self-explanatory. It does, it does all the work for you. In everything, give thanks. Now, the why. I mean, maybe you were looking for the exception clause or ain't, but here's, here's the why. Why? For this is the will of God. In Christ Jesus concerning who? You. Now that's you as in plural you, y'all. That's y'all. But it's also you, the individual. That is God's will in your life that you be thankful in everything. Why? Because it's God's will. So if you've ever asked that question, I don't know what God wants me to do. I don't know his will in my life. Well, here's one. In everything, give thanks. Why? It is the will of God in Jesus Christ. And that applies to you. All y'all and you. It's you. That's God's will in your life. In everything, give thanks. In fact, there is no exception where you're permitted not to give thanks. It's in everything. Now, it's easy. And absolutely encouraged, and you absolutely should, to not appear ungrateful to God. But when there is feasting and celebration, give thanks to God. Thank Him for everything. Appreciate all that He has done for you and provided for you. And remember that maybe there was a time when it was not so good. Remember there was a time where, you know what, it, it wasn't this great. And perhaps the time may come where it may not be great as it is now. So what I have now by his blessings, by his grace, if you are walking with God, you only have what you have by his grace alone. Now the wicked, they get stuff from God too. Did you know that? But that's all they get. They don't have an inheritance beyond that. They just, they're, just take, they're selling an inheritance for a bowl of soup. Getting what they can get now and enjoy it now. And even then, they're not thankful. But you, dear friend, have something more in Jesus Christ. You have an inheritance far surpassing anything that is considered good on this earth. And by good, I mean God's good, not somebody else's good. It is your blessing. It's your inheritance. It's your privilege. It is your possession to walk into, and one day it will be yours. When you come of age, when you cross over that Jordan, when you enter into that promised land, it is yours. And you're not going to stop thanking and praising him when you get there. One of the reasons that you shouldn't be doing or that you should be doing it is because you've been practicing here in your praising and your thanking. God also, though, is to be praised. And thanked in hard times. Why? Everything. Everything. You praise him in hard times too. You praise him when things are just wrong, not right. You can even be innocent or whatever and suffer just for being innocent. And yet you give praise to God. 
And maybe you're thinking, well, who can do that? I ain't never seen anybody do that. Well, there's this man named Jesus who one time did that. See, unlike you, he was actually innocent. Unlike you, he actually had no sin. Unlike you, he loved God with all his heart and obeyed him fully. And it was his delight to walk with God, his father. And he did it. And the sins of the world was placed upon him as the Holy Lamb of God. And yet he's giving thanks to God even in his death, forgiving people who are nailing him to the cross. So when God asks you to give thanks for everything, he's not cold-hearted from a distance, some uncaring being that just gives out random commands. He walked it. He lived it. He carried it out. He demonstrated it, and he led the way. As I have done, you do. It's not the command to follow Jesus Christ, follow me. Repent, pick up your cross daily, and follow me. Do what I do. Act like I act. Head the direction I am heading to. One of the things that you'll see Jesus do is he gives thanks. Thankful in all things. In the end, it's all of God's will that we want. Because when the times are hard, you're either enduring his discipline in which God is trying to correct you because you are deviating from the path he wants for you. And he will bring his chastisement upon you. If you are his child, he will correct you. You won't enjoy it. You won't like it. You will, you will want to buck against it. But he gives it to you anyway for your own good. Because he loves you and you're his child. But sometimes he does it just because you are clay in his hand. And he needs to fashion you into the vessel he, he wants you to be. And it's going to hurt sometimes. But if you are in the hands of the Father, you give thanks. If the Lord is working on you and it's painful, you're in the Lord's hands, you say, thank God I'm in your hands. I trust you of what you're doing. I don't understand it. It's even painful. I, I, it's beyond me, God, why you're even doing it. But if I'm with you, I'm okay. Praise be to God. In the end, we need our prayer to be like that of Jesus. Not my will, but yours be done. So for this Thanksgiving season, Understand that this is a day of thanksgiving. It comes from a long line of tradition of days actually being declared of thanksgiving for great and grand events. For a whole nation to stop what they're doing and to not just say thank you, but to give thanks to who? To God. For his mighty hand in working in our lives. But we are to do that every day. No government should have to command you to give thanks. That should come naturally. No pastor or church should say, hey, today we're going to make an extra effort for thanks, giving thanks, when it should come naturally. Now, it's not wrong to come here and have a Thanksgiving service. But this is an extension to what should come normal anyway, for the people of God to give thanks for what they have. This is why... There is a joy in the Lord. This is why, at least it was to me for a time, that sometimes Christians were annoying to me. You know how? No matter how you mistreat them, they, they still were like, whatever, I'm happy. Now, you get mad at that, and then you try to keep taking jabs at them and, throw, you know, and, and try to throw them off, and they're just like, whatever. Praise God. <laughs> That's irritating when you're a sinner. <laughs> Very, very irritating. But now I understand. Now I understand that there is a joy in the Lord. That you can give thanks when it seems like a thankless situation. Why? Because we have a great inheritance. Something better than anything that is here. What is given today can be taken away tomorrow. Possessions, wealth, people in your lives. It could be here today. Tomorrow it could be gone. But we have an inheritance beyond that. We have treasures in heaven that cannot be taken. 
I have no idea if there's turkey in heaven, but if it is, it's not going to get taken from us. There's not going to be a year where we can't afford the turkey in heaven. <laughs> and, I, and maybe I can get more gravy than I get right here. And the gravy will be good every time. I don't know. All I know is but what God has for us will be directly from him to me, to you. And it is something in which we give thanks for. We be, have to be told in heaven, hey, you better, you better say your, bless, your blessing and pray for it and thank God for it. It would just instinct, good God, thank you. Wow, amazing. Look what you have done. Look how great God is. See, I don't think heaven is a, like one stop, you get there and you're like, oh, this is cool, I made it. It's going to be one of those places where you are going to continuously see the glory of God expand more and more, and you'll never see it end. Because his glory does not have a definition to define it. It's not containable. It's, it's just eternal. You will never catch up to it. You can never soak in enough of his glory to where you're like, well, I've seen all I need to see. What's next? It would just constantly be filled within our souls to be in God's presence like that. And, it, it, and I understand that this church has for a while been in the book of Revelation. You do understand what happens at the end, right? There is a lot of praising going on. There is a lot of worshiping going on in heaven. You ain't got to make people do it. You ain't got to prompt them to do it. It's just spontaneous outpouring of praise and worship, and it's just on. There's no off button. It's just continuous. You don't see people in there like, I'm tired. I need to take a break. It, you know, this, is, this church service has been going on for a while. We need to, like, you know, take intermission or something. It's just there's no thought of not praising the glory of God. It never ends. Now, we have glimpses of his glory here in Jesus Christ by his witness. We see it in our brothers and sisters in Christ and others. We have the Holy Spirit of God that dwells within us. We are a walking temple of God. We are a burning flame of the altar of God moving about. We can and should give thanks for everything to Lord God Almighty. We are by inheritance a thankful people. If you are born again, being thankful is going to come a lot easier than if you're not. And I mean a genuine thankfulness. I don't mean someone that just is polite. Thank you, thank you. Because they were raised that way. I'm talking about someone that in the depths of their soul, they know what God has done for them, and they are just eternally grateful. It is not lost on them what God has done for them, and it's like they cannot thank God enough. And what that, that spills into everything. Hey, thanks for the ice water. Hey, thank you for, you know, walking my dog. Or uh, God, hey, you know, thank you for this beautiful day. And, and, and you won't even have to be triggered by other people. No one can be around and you'll be thanking God. If the Holy Spirit be here, you can't help but do it. I've even noticed how creation seems to thank God. And the way they just, as Jesus explained, when you see it, like I watch birds sometimes, and they're just like, the sun just comes up, and then they start to wake and flap around, and they be messing in the water and flapping about, and they're just so cheerful. They're just thanking God for another day. And they're not like, what am I going to eat? How I got this to do? And what about this? And, you know, and they're just happy. I see it. I think, Lord God, even, even the birds worship you. Everything should worship you. The rocks will cry out if you won't cry out. All of creation groans for the restoration of the new heaven and the new earth that God brings. I, I mean, we'll be worshiping, but I think there's going to be all kinds of things worshiping God like we maybe ain't even comprehended. The giving of thanks shall never end. Now, above all, how is it possible? 
because we know that God has saved us. God has saved us. And if we are delivered, and if we are truly set free, the Holy Spirit of God is really in you. Is it really a heavy burden to be thankful? I I should think not. If someone saved your life, pick a scenario, but like you were about at the verge of death, and they came in, and they intervened, and at the last moment snatched you from the jaws of death, and you know that person saved my life. Like every time you thought of, you'd be like, I thank, <laughs> thank you for being here. Every time you see them, hey, how's it going? I'm so thankful to see you again. Hey, you know, I, I never forget what you've done for me. I guarantee you if that person said, hey, I want you to do something for me, you'd be like, sure, anything. What do you want? Oh, my life for you. You could tell me anything, I'll do it for you. What do you want? Jesus gave his life for you. He intervened on the point of death. Now, this death is a little bit more severe. We're talking about a second death. We're about talking about a trip to hell. We're talking about eternal damnation and separation from God. You were heading that way until Jesus intervened and made a way and yanked you from that death. Remember that. So that when Jesus says, I want you to do this for me, should it not be the same way? Well, sure, anything. My goodness, you saved me from this. You can ask me anything, I'll do it. Well, dear friends and Christians, brothers and sisters in Christ, let's start here tonight. In everything, give thanks. Why? Why? It's the will of God in Jesus Christ, the one that saved you, the one who pulled you from that death. Hey, do this for me in everything. (laughs) Give thanks. A real gut feeling thanks. I'll give an example as I close. I'm, I'm a very keen observer of people. I've been for many years, probably because of the scenarios I've been in, but you you start to see patterns of how people operate. And in this area, this is one of them that I see. Something about God might come up or, hey, how you doing? They might throw in a, I'm blessed. Or you might ask them, hey, are are you blessed? How's how's the thing? How you doing, brother? And and they'll say something like, oh, I, I, I thank God I'm alive. But they say it in a manner of they were trying to think of something to be thankful about, and that's the quickest thing they can come up with. Uh, I thank God I woke up and I'm breathing. <laughs> well, that's good. I, I guess that's good. Is that it? <laughs> Is there nothing else to be thankful? Is that the culmination of your everything? Because everybody gets up when they get another day. Have we forgotten that to live is Christ and to die is gain? Sometimes we forget that for a Christian, death is a good thing. We give thanks for that too, right? Well, I'm just trying, I'm just sliding by and I finally got out of bed and I'm going to make it, but you know, God, I'm blessed. You gave me breath. I mean, you, I'm not convinced when you say it that way. I'm just saying that's what I observe in this area. That among other little quirks that happen. You're trying to say God's so great in your life, but the way you express it, it sounds like it is a real heavy burden, and I don't want to be you. When we are thankful, it should just come out of the depths of your soul. I am thankful to God for everything, good and bad, I don't care what it is. I just, I am the Lord's and he is mine. I am a part of his people and he is my God and I am thankful. Oh, that don't mean I don't have hard time. It don't mean that I'm not suffering injustice. It doesn't mean that, hey, I'm short of a dollar today. It doesn't mean I'm not affected by inflation just like everybody else. My prices went up on gas just as much as it did on you. But nonetheless, glory be to God. All I know is is I look around the world and I learn more and more every day. Yep, I definitely don't want to stay here forever. (laughs) I'm about ready to go. Lord, any time you want to yank me up there, you go ahead. 
There's nothing to hold on down here. All I know is that I am here for time and I'm passing through. I am a pilgrim. <laughs> we associate pilgrims with a with a thank you. We're pilgrims. We're passing through. We're on our way to somewhere else. So while we're here, we just walk with God, knowing where we're heading, counting on his provision to sustain us along the way in whatever we face, and being thankful because not of where I'm at. Thankful because of where I'm headed. I'm going to a good place, and it is not here. You know what? Thanks be to God, it is not like this place. Amen. I know here in a little, I, I'm, I'm about done there, so there's some more worship. There will be uh, an invitation, or uh, I call it an altar call, but I assume people come up front, right, for that too. I want to encourage you today. When when the good pastor here opened it up and asked you to come forward in invitation, let that spirit of God in you stir you and move you. It's a Thanksgiving service. Come up here and truly express your thanksgiving to God. I'm thankful for that preacher, amen? And uh, he's one of my friends, and he's a preacher at a different church. But I welcome him to share with me anytime, and I guarantee you there's no animosity here, brother. I love it. Matter of fact, I have great joy sitting listening to a good preacher. I do. I don't get to hear. You know, most of the time I'm up here, not down there, but he kept my attention. He keep yours? Also, I want you all to know he's talking about being thankful for everything and them high prices on that gas. I, I have learned, I have a truck that's just turned 30. That means it doesn't have to be inspected. So I called up Randy to appear and, right. and cried with Wes because and, and, I know they'll miss that $13.60 a year now. And, <laughs> and with that high price gas, that $3, what is it now? Three, three, what? I figured that old truck of mine with 335,000 miles will run better with expensive gas than it will cheap gas. Amen? <laughs> I'm just trying to help you what the preacher said. Give thanks about everything, right? <laughs> All right, friends. It's been a great day in the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, you have heard your messenger tonight. And he has blessed all of us. And I pray that he has blessed you as well. He has spoken truth in everything we need to be thankful, 24-7, 365. There's never a time, Lord, as you have given us everything, and therefore we should be thanking you for everything, even if we don't understand it, even if we don't like it. So, Lord, help us do that. Instill your will in us in a way, Lord, that we have no doubt what it is, even if we don't like it. And, Father, there will be one here tonight that's been carrying a heavy burden on their heart. As we sing a song just simply to get, get us all on our feet and sing it to you, may it touch the hearts and minds of anybody that's here, that hears this, to do something about it for their sake, Lord. For your sake, their sake, and your glory. In your son's name.